moving on. Hopefully you're kind of realizing that a lot of this gas law stuff is review from first year. It's conceptual. It makes sense. You can usually check and see if your answer is reasonable. This isn't so bad, huh? Uh, before we really get into some gas stoichiometry, let's look at this little calculation here. Calculate the volume of one mole of an ideal gas, which we'll talk about ideal gases in a little bit. Ideal gas at standard temperature and pressure. Now you don't have to memorize standard temperature and pressure. It's often listed as STP. They'll give you that in the AP packet. They'll tell you standard temperature and pressure. Now they're going to give you temperature as 273.15 Kelvin. And then they do say 1.0 atmosphere. But again, they also tell you that one atmosphere is equivalent to 760 millimeters mercury and 760 tor. You do not need to memorize the conditions of STP. They're in the packet. All right, so let's do this. Uh, let's use some um, pervnert. PV equals NRT. Uh, let's use this with standard temperature and pressure. And we're going to calculate the volume of one mole. Okay, standard pressure. I'm going to say 1.0 atmospheres. Now, so it's given in the packet. We're looking for volume. N is going to be 1 mole. Now, let's say 1.0. We'll keep it consistent. R is your gas constant. It's dependent on your units for pressure, which if we use atmospheres, again, these are in the AB packet. You don't have to memorize them. Let's use their 0 0.08206. And this would be atmosphere liter per mole Kelvin. Which again means all the other units need to match the units of your gas constant. My temperature needs to be in Kelvin. Uh, 273. I'll use 0.15. Okay, so let's plug this in and see what we get. Mm -hmm. Haha. <laughs> okay, so I kind of hints at it. If I go to, I don't know, if we go to three sig figs, you'll get a number that's hopefully familiar to you. Volume, 22.4 liters. In first year chem, you probably used this number. I'm hoping you did. It's a constant. Now, it's not given in the AP packet, but if you remember this, it's called the molar volume of a gas. This would be something that could come in handy. One mole of any gas, any gas, it doesn't matter the identity of the gas, just the amount of particles. One mole at standard temperature and pressure. Because again, if I change the temperature and the pressure, that's going to affect the volume. But at a standard temperature and pressure, one mole of any gas should have a volume of 22.4 liters. Now again, they wouldn't have the same mass. You know, if I had 22.4 liters of hydrogen versus oxygen, if they're at standard temperature and pressure, I should have the same amount of particles, equal volumes. But obviously, different gases would have different masses. So this is a constant. It's not given in the packet, but it can come in handy. So maybe it's something to, uh, I don't know, throw in your long-term memory, or at least till May. Here's where you might be able to use it. A sample of nitrogen gas has a volume of 1.75 liters at standard temperature and pressure. How many moles of nitrogen are present? Now you could use Perfner. You could use pervert, you could have standard pressure, you've got your volume, you've got standard temperature. You could set this up using pervert and solve for moles. Or you could set up a little proportion. Uh, you could say something like this. You could do one mole of any gas as long as it's at standard temperature and pressure occupies a volume of 22.4 liters. And so you could do a little proportion and you could say, well, how many moles are present then if I only have 1.75 liters? You could do that. 
So it's a fraction of the volume. It should be the same fraction of the amount of particles. Or you could do it kind of like stoichiometry. And you could say, I have 1.75 liters. Doesn't matter what kind of gas. 22.4 liters would be the volume of one mole. Let's see how many moles I have. Uh, either way, you plug this in, you'd be looking at about point, let's go three, zero, seven, eight, one moles. Am I saying that this is nitrogen? Again, it's totally irrelevant. This could be absolutely any gas. It's not asking about the mass of the gas. Number of particles should be proportional. So again, rather than doing a whole big pervert thing, this might just be a quicker way of calculating volume or moles if the gas is at standard temperature and pressure. Could come in handy. All right, so let's see what else we can do with some stoichiometry. Ooh, uh, this is a good one. Quicklime calcium oxide is produced by the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate. Basically, we're going to heat it. Calculate the volume of carbon dioxide produced at standard temperature and pressure. Uh, that's important. From the decomposition of 152 grams of calcium carbonate. All right, well, let's get a balanced equation. Let's just check these ratios. Because we're given an amount of calcium carbonate, we want to know an amount of product, carbon dioxide gas. Here's one of those equations that might be helpful to kind of remember too. When you heat carbonates, they tend to give off carbon dioxide gas. Like when you heat baking soda, sodium bicarbonate, you get bubbles of carbon dioxide gas. Uh, we've got calcium carbonate, CO3. Calcium is plus 2, minus 2. Now we're going to heat this. And again, they kind of hint at the products. Uh, calcium oxide is produced, plus 2 minus 2, along with carbon dioxide gas. And that one obviously is covalent. I don't need to check the charges. Oh, interesting. Well, it's probably a good thing that we checked the ratio from the balanced equation. It is all one-to-ones. So that's going to be nice. But it wouldn't have to be. And if I had a different mole ratio, that might affect my calculations. Okay, so we want to go from this to this. We have 152 grams of that calcium carbonate. And we want to know how much carbon dioxide. Well, back in the regular stoichiometry chapter, we could have figured out maybe uh, moles of carbon dioxide or grams of carbon dioxide. But typically, a gas would be measured by volume produced. So let's see how far we can get. Uh, I know I can't compare these in grams. So we're going to cancel grams of calcium carbonate. We need it in moles. That's a O. One mole, we added up. On my periodic table, just a hair over 100, 09. And I think we also kind of mentioned earlier that when you're using the AP periodic table, don't round them. Like, I get that's really close to 100. And maybe if you're doing your homework or you're just kind of like checking answers, sure, you did it right. You'll get a really close answer if you used 100. But they will take off a half a point uh, if you don't use the full mass that's given in their periodic table. It's not a big deal, though. Most of the masses are pretty reasonable. Okay, so these guys, grams and grams, cancel. And now if I want it to be like a proper little stoichiometry person, I would cancel moles of my reactant and switch to moles of my product using the ratio from the balanced equation, which in this case is kind of irrelevant. It's one-to-one -one ratios. So does it change my final answer? Not at all. But I don't know. I like seeing my units cancel. So I'm going to put it in there. And I'm going to plug this in and say with three sig figs, 1.52 moles of carbon dioxide. Awesome. And again, when we do stoichiometry, we don't use molar masses 
for sig figs, we would go back to the original number. Uh, so I use three sig figs. So with three sig figs, that 100.09, it didn't really change my answer. But that's all right. I feel good about it. Okay, so now here's what we can do. If you wanted, uh, you could use Pervner and solve for volume, but you don't have a whole lot of data. And I, you know that it's at standard temperature and pressure, so you could go to your packet and look up standard temperature, standard pressure, and plug it into Pervner. Or you could just do this. If it's at standard temperature and pressure, 1.52 moles of any gas should occupy a volume of uh, 22.4 liters per mole. So you could kind of set up a proportion or a ratio. You could set it up kind of like stoichiometry style. One mole would be 22.4 liters. All right, so I have a little bit over a mole. Let's say 34.0 liters of carbon dioxide. Second, it maybe just saves you a little step if you remember this. 22.4 uh, liters per mole, but you can only use this at standard temperature and pressure. Now, if it wasn't at standard temperature and pressure, they would give you the new temperature and pressure, and then your only option would be to use uh, Pervner, which we might look at in the next video.